Arc Aberration. I haven't been this excited about an expansion for any game in a very, very long time, if ever. So the Arc devs actually had a Q&A today that was live streamed on Twitch, and they revealed some very interesting information that I kind of wanted to go over with all of you that may have missed it. So we're kind of just going through the trailer right now, and then we're going to stop at a few points in the trailer to kind of talk about some of the stuff that to anticipate when Aberration releases in October. There's some really cool things with this Rock Drake that we didn't know about upon seeing the trailer that we now know to kind of expect some interesting things that happen with these guys. And uh, let's go ahead and start taking a look. We'll go back a little bit. So back here at the beginning, you can see that we're not waking up on a beach anymore. We're actually waking up underground. Now, most of this game actually takes place underground. Now, that's not really a major deal. That's just pretty interesting to, to have a different way to starting the game. You're so used to starting up and seeing the sky and all that stuff. But the really interesting thing is these pets. So we've been told by the Arc devs that there's about 12 new, quote unquote, I'm just using dinos, but new creatures being implemented in Aberration. Three of which are going to be, quote unquote, extremely cute pets like the pug here, which is pretty exciting because this guy is absolutely adorable. Oh my God. Look at that face. It's a face only a mother could love, but man, it is cute. But... These things have very important roles to play in Aberration. They're not just cute pets. Much like the Jerboa on Scorched Earth, these pets will be integral to how you survive on Aberration. Now, we know that you need to... When, when you're going through a night cycle in Aberration, there are creatures that want to kill you. So, these creatures here, like this pug, has a little light on its head. So, I imagine that's going to protect you well in the dark. And they also mentioned that the two other creatures pets that will be implemented will have the same sort of uh, effects to help you survive in this terrible, terrible area. Now, speaking of terrible area, they did mention in this Q&A that like Scor unlike Scorched Earth, everything in this map is not out to murder you all the time. Like Scorched Earth, everything was there to just end you all the time. The weather was out to get you. Everything was out to get you. Not so... In aberration we have cute dinos and stuff like that but the actual earthquakes that happen when you're on aberration which is this is the beginning of one here and they talked about what these things are a little bit as well in the Q&A but the um, the earthquakes aren't always bad they mentioned in the Q&A that the more you learn about the earthquakes, the easier they will be to deal with and the more you can actually benefit from them. So when you first get in, the earthquakes might seem really, really bad. But as you understand them, apparently there is a lot of things that you can accomplish while these earthquakes are going on and things that you can extremely benefit from. So I imagine something that you're going to want to learn really fast is everything to know about earthquakes so when you when you start playing learn about earthquakes right away because apparently there are some extreme benefits uh to get or to have when there is an earthquake happening so that's going to be one of the things i focus on first i think is actually learning as much about these earthquakes as possible now they didn't tell us what this item in our hand was but apparently there are just like in Scorched Earth, some new resources to gather. And this item here, it actually gathers one of the new resources in this particular biome. And I don't imagine it only gets it during an earthquake. Maybe it does. I don't know. But uh, this is actually a new resource gatherer that is in Aberration. So that is pretty cool. And then another thing we need to touch base on is there is no flyers on this map which i for one am actually really excited about i don't like flyers i think it's just so much beautiful stuff in this game that you miss when you're just flying around and doing everything so in this game it's integral to actually walk around and walk through these dangerous biomes especially at night that's going to be a freaking nightmare but it's going to be so much fun because these biomes look amazing so they did say that there are technically four biomes. There's three biomes and then the surface biome. But within each of the biomes, there are sub-biomes, which this is actually a sub-biome of the biome back here, which we saw at the beginning. If we go back here, this is a certain biome. But then we have sub-biomes of this biome, 
which go into this... Oh, oh we skipped a little too far. <laughs> there we go. Into this biome, which actually looks really cool. Completely different color scheme. And then we have a new way to build. So in the Q&A, they mentioned that building on the ground is not something you want to do. So... And we also got a little sneak peek of another critter here. I didn't actually notice this in the first time I watched the trailer. So this is another critter, and <laughs> it looks like a, a mole or something like that. I don't know. It's pretty interesting. I want. It's. I'm curious to know what it's going to actually do. But they said right off the bat, you should be able to build on these cliff faces right when you start. So it's something you're going to want to focus on really early in the game. Uh, get uh, get yourselves off the ground and start building up in the sky. Or not in the sky, but on these rock faces. And you will be able to do that very early on. Even with, apparently, with wood tiers and everything like that as well. So I think everybody pretty much knew that already. But uh, I'm really interested to see how this is going to work out, especially for, like, base raids and stuff like that without having dinos to fly on. That's the main reason, like, I... I hate building like big squares in Ark and flyers always, you always had to build a big freaking square because of all the flying dinos. And now there's no flying dinos and it's going to be really interesting to see how people build to cope with that. But then we have the Rock Drake. So they did mention that the uh, Rock Drake, you are able to use the chameleon mode at all times with the Rock Drake, but it's not going to be incredibly broken where you can just be invisible all the time and just murderize everybody there's actually specific ways that it works and uh, it's definitely one of those things that i'm interested in seeing uh, how it works but you can actually glide very long distances with the rock drake it works a lot like the batman arkham wingsuit which uh, they mentioned in the q a a few times that if you were really good with using that uh, this isn't quite as good as a mechanic as it was in batman but if you get good at it you can actually get and traverse across the map very quickly with the rock drake and apparently it moves incredibly fast i mean look at that movement speed on that thing it's freaking crazy so they did mention that besides the chameleon mode the gliding and that like that freaking burst towards the end where apparently it latches onto any surface it's looking at if you engage that burst it will latch on immediately it will fly towards and latch on to anything it's looking at but apparently it has one more skill that we don't know about. These head feathers apparently do something, and I imagine what they do is they emit light at night to kind of keep you safe. Because we can kind of tell that the tips of all of these feathers, they're a little bit more like a neon than the rest of the body. So I'm imagining that these will act as a light source when you're traveling around at night to kind of keep you safe from those freaking um, little golem things that come out of the ground. I don't know what they're called. They don't have an official name for it. We did find out that they don't have an official name. But, uh, and then we've got these, obviously everybody knows about this, but this, they mentioned something really amazing about this crab. That not only can you pick people up with that and just, he said, you can literally just smash them and kill them and just absolutely destroy their world with the crab. But apparently one of the mechanics that this is going to have is that this crab can actually wind up when it's got somebody grabbed and throw them through the air. So this is a way that you could actually use these crabs to jump into people's bases. You could have somebody on the crab throwing people up into the sky into people's bases that are built on these cliff faces, which is really cool. I'm excited to tame a crab and just start throwing people all over the place. That is a mechanic I wasn't anticipating, and it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Or to maybe even get to locations that you couldn't otherwise uh, get to. Or maybe, I mean, you can climb all the surfaces, they said. Also, if we go back here, that's one thing I forgot about. The rock golem is much like the megalonia, so it can attach to all surfaces, not just the vertical surfaces. Apparently, it can latch to ceilings and climb around to basically all corners of everything. It works a lot better than the megalonia. They mentioned that they did a lot of work on getting it to be significantly better than how the Megalania was. Now, you did see that there was a raptor in there. So we do only have 12 new species of, uh, of creatures in here. So there's 12 new, which is about the same we got on Scorched Earth. So I was kind of figuring that was going to be about the same. So we've got 12 new creatures, three of which are small pets. And then we don't know how many of those 12 creatures in total so really we have three small creatures and then we're gonna have sorry eight or nine other creatures that are 
uh, larger, but we don't know if they're going to be tameable or not yet. So we'll kind of get to that in a second, which with the things that I don't think are going to be tameable. We've already seen t three that we can tame, so <laughs> we're getting there. Now these gliders work just like the wingsuit in Batman as well. So you can actually get really far across the map. Now these guys, I'm thinking, are going to be one of the 12 new creatures that are not tameable. Now this here, apparently... Uh, just it's not like a lightning thing although it looks like it apparently it's bursting out rays of light that these creatures hate that you need to use to get them to run away I'm also thinking that this freaking <laughs> dragon t-rex looking thing is not going to be tameable as well it seems like one of those bosses that you encounter while at night that you just don't want to mess with now uh, once we get up here we can see uh, the actual surface finally with the broken uh, pillar here that these I, I imagine um, used to emit the actual barrier with the sky now we can actually see into space at all times with this which is pretty freaking cool now this is where we get into the day and night cycle what they were talking about is the day and night cycle is not the same every day it's very very different it's not randomized but it's very complex and apparently as you play the game you start learning all of this day and night cycle stuff so like um i don't know really how to explain it they didn't explain it very well in the q a but basically the more you learn about it, the more you can actually take advantage of each time of day because there's different things that you can do during these times and you have a benefit there's always a benefit to every um basically every new because in scorched earth we had the the heat then we had the hurricane or not the hurricanes <laughs> the sandstorms and stuff like that all of the new weather effects in Aberration, they're not going to be uh, incredibly oppressive like they were in Scorched Earth. You can actually prepare for the earthquake so that doesn't affect you nearly as much. So you can actually benefit from the earthquake. And then they mentioned there's a couple other weather systems that happen. Now, it's not going to make you have to sit in your base until it's over. There's actually things that you can prepare for before this happens. And then you can actually benefit from it while it's happening. So that's pretty cool. And then the day and night cycle is something you actually have to learn and figure out how that goes. So that you can actually figure out when is a good time to go onto the surface uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So that is really cool. They also mentioned they might not be making Gamma available, which I completely understand. Because why make something that's so integral to being in the night and then allowing people just to boost their gamma up to completely ruin the experience. So that's that's really cool. It's going to make it a pain for recording for us YouTubers. But otherwise, I think it's a really good decision. So there is a lot of cool stuff coming out in Aberration. And I hope this um, recap of their Q&A gave you guys a little bit more information to how everything is going to work. I'm going to try and get more information as we go. But I hope you guys all enjoyed this. There is so much stuff coming in this that's completely different. All new weapons, 12 new dinos, 3 amazingly cute creatures that are integral to how you actually play the game. And I just, I cannot wait. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And uh, let me know what you're most excited for. But anyways, that is all I've got. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye bye